Hey you guys, so <clears throat> I wanted to make a video about how to use the transit report feature on Parashara's Light software. Now this is something that will make your work so much easier as an astrologer and you'll just see that um, it's so clear and accurate and especially when I use this with my clients, they love to see the timeline of when things are going to happen. So let's take a look at this. Now, a brief discussion about the difference between um, doing uh, Jataka, which is a birth chart reading, and Prashna, which is horary. Um, basically, it goes back to the different kinds of karma that we have. We have fixed karma and we have unfixed karma. Our fixed karma is our birth chart, and that's what we are uh, born with. It's what we inherit from our past lives, and it's what we're here to do. And that doesn't change. Um, basically, you know, not everyone's going to be a doctor. Not everyone's going to be an artist. And you cannot change your birth chart, uh, what your destiny is, you know. But what you can change is your attitude. You can change how you respond to your destiny. And that's the unfixed karma. So an example would be like, uh, let's say you get a sinus infection, okay? That's your fixed karma. But what you do and how you respond to that uh, sinus infection, that is your unfixed karma. What do you do? Do you go to the doctor and get antibiotics? Do you take vitamin C? Do you take hot baths? Do you take care of yourself? Or do you ignore it and it gets worse and it turns into pneumonia? You know, like, what do you do with your fixed karma? Um, that's your attitude. So prashna helps us to see what are the possibilities of um, a situation. You know, what can be changed? How can we improve a situation? And the way I've seen it operate is like God's will is in the birth chart, but your free will is in the prashna chart. But we have to be careful not to confuse our free will with our ego because our ego may, you know, want a different spouse or want a different career, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But if it's not in the birth chart, it ain't happening, honey. I'm sorry. It's not happening. So you've got to read the prashna within the parameters of what is realistic in the birth chart and also what's realistic in the transits. So for instance, if you have uh, every indication in the prashna that for instance, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that happened last year um, is gonna happen at a certain time, uh, it was indicating a, 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 the timing of an event that your client is asking about, Let's say you're counting in months and it looks like it's gonna be August, but you know that Jupiter and Saturn are going to be conjunct last year on December 21st. So rather than just assuming that August would be the date of the event, also consider that when the big thing is happening for those transiting planets, that's also the date. And that's what I found to be true. So it's a very um, delicate blend of the two thinkings and you have to use a lot of discernment. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at how this works. I have the birth chart of Kamala Harris and I have her at October 20th, 1964 at 2128 in Oakland, California. This puts her as a Gemini ascendant Mergashira uh, Nakshatra. Her moon is in Aries in Ashwini. Um, and her sun is in Libra in Chitra Nakshatra. So what you do is you go up to where it says print. You go down to transit Dasha report. And it's not Dasha, it's Dasha. <laughs> And you wanna to go to edit transit preferences. Now, this is where you've got to make sure that you 
get everything clicked right. Otherwise, you're going to be flooded with so information, so much information, you won't be able to read it. So we don't want these faster moving planets because uh, there's just too many aspects. It gets confusing. Um, and that's Venus too. But we want the slower moving planets because they will show when they aspect the faster moving planets, okay? That's all you need. You want the points exact degree. You want the Vedic aspects. You want every sign. I like every nakshatra because I want to see, you know, when the transit uh, planets are shifting energy. That helps me. You don't have to click this, okay? Um, you should do the every sign. And then the points in the chart, you want all the points in the chart. Um, you can do the extra ones if you want. I find it's a bit much. Um, and then, you know, you want all house cusps, but the reason you want this one is because you want to see when things are aspecting the ascendant, which is the first house. That, that's really uh, when you see points of, of manifestation when they aspect the first house, because it's yourself, right? Um, I like to see when Sadi Sati is starting and ending, and I want to see when the retrogrades are, okay? So that is my transit preferences. Then I'm going to decide, okay, when do I want to see this from? Well, let's do it from, actually, let's do it from next month. It's almost August. So we'll do it from August this year until August next year. Now, when I'm doing a reading from, for someone, I will do two years because, um, that gives us a little bit more to talk about. Um, but just for right now, we're gonna do one year. And then you click view, and then voila, there are your transits, you guys. This is not rocket science, okay? Uh, the guy who developed the software has figured this out for us. So all we have to do is put in that information and boom, there are your transits. So when you're doing prashna, and you see an indication of something, you know, look to where those planets are, are, go, are going to be in a few months and in, in six months in a year. And that's gonna really tighten your Prashna prediction from what I found. Now for her, let's just take a look. Uh, it just happens to be that the moon is in Aries today. It is almost exactly on top of her moon in the 11th house. And just as a nimitta and also as a, as a prashna, um, I could tell you that that indicates that because I pulled up her chart and the moon is going over her moon and it's in her 11th house, we've got some big things coming up for her. And I know several people have been talking about, you know, uh, Biden's health not doing well. And just looking at the astrology charts, okay? Um, everyone's talking about him weakening right now. And um, because um, K2 is on his ascendant and other things that are going on. We won't pull up his chart, but basically for Kamala, okay? These are her transits. So Jupiter's transiting her Saturn. Oh my God. <laughs> so August 3rd, Jupiter is going to be on her Saturn. Well, hello. Remember last year what happened when Jupiter and Saturn came together? It's a game changer. This is a point of manifestation. This is growth. This is, you know, um, Jupiter wants to expand everything. Saturn wants to contract everything. So poof, right? It's like an explosion happens and something, an event will definitely happen on August 3rd. Um, for her, it's in her ninth house. And ninth house, she is a lawyer. And ninth house is the house of law. Um, she's, I think, going to come into some more responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. So I like to use the cusps because uh, I find that, because um, I use the Placidus house system, it's not always um, on, you know, the cusp isn't always on the cusp. So you want to look at when these planets are actually transiting that, it will trigger an event. So basically from August 3rd to September 4th, she's going to have a change in position. Um, what else is going on for her? And again, when it goes direct, when Jupiter goes direct. Um, yeah. 
Lots of Jupiter stuff. Aspecting her Ascendant, aspecting her Rahu. Fifth house, third house, yeah. Changing laws, changing positions. Uh, Pluto transits the cusp of the eighth house. Wow. Hello. Uh, you know, in Western astrology, Pluto rules Scorpio, and Scorpio is the natural eighth house. Um, and eighth house is the house of darkness. It is where we cannot see straight, and Pluto is fear. Um, gosh, Pluto's transiting her eighth house. Well, this is massive change and transformation. Uh, yeah, I think it's concerning laws. Should be interesting. Uh, and then again, December, oh God, Christmas Eve, Jupiter transits Saturn. Look at that. Again, so this whole period, um, it's gonna be her stepping up. Uh, so I'm really fearful for Biden's health. Eighth house is the health, house of death and Pluto is the house of death. I mean, the planet of death. Oh boy, okay, so what else do we have here? Well, all this stuff is coming into Libra, February 14th. Um, K2 is backing up into Vishaka. Vishaka spans, you know, Libra and Scorpio. So it'll be on the Scorpio side, going back into Libra, giddy gritty the next month for K2 being in Libra and Rahu being in Aries. So this is kind of a foreshadowing period. Saturn enters Danishta, the richest one. Again, he's gonna be there going back and forth with retrograde. Uh, K2 transits cusp of the sixth house. Oh, so she's entering. So you see all these planets here, Sun, Mercury, Neptune in the fifth house. Well. It's not so bad, honestly. I mean, when I see something like this, I think a, a musician. Fifth house of creativity, Mercury and Neptune. Neptune's music, Mercury's you know communication. The sun is your soul, it's your essence. He doesn't always, you know, I mean, he's a flashlight. Wherever he sits in a chart, he's, he's um, flooding light into that, um, that house. And so, yeah, her talents are really going to be amped up next year. Maybe all of that, um, the experience she gained as a lawyer is really going to come into play at this time. Who transits cusp of 6th and 12th? Well, you know, K2 in the 6th and Rahu in the 12th, which is where it is right now for her. Uh, indicates um, her service that she's serving. This is um, past life stuff. She's she's serving, um, but also that she's um, uh, learning how to deal with money, especially money from foreign lands. Isn't that interesting? Okay, yeah. Rahu transits her Jupiter, March eleventh. Um, and of course, K2 will be in opposition to that. Um, that's money, y'all. Um, I wonder what's gonna happen with that. And also, you know, enemies. But having Jupiter there is gonna help her with her enemies. Jupiter transits cusp of the 10th house. So Jupiter goes into Pisces, basically. Yeah, April 13th. So April 13th to April 17th is gonna be big for her career-wise. She could really, I know, I wouldn't be surprised if she becomes president. You know, I don't wanna, I wouldn't wish harm on anyone. And I um, don't, I don't predict things from a, a place of malice, but I just see it and I have to speak it. And I just feel like Biden's chart is showing a weakness and hers is showing such strength that I think she's going to be president. Um, and then Saturn joins. Dang. 
yeah, law, career, law, career, communities. I mean, it's just, she's getting hammered with responsibility. So that's just a brief example of how you use um, this transit Dasha report. It's so helpful, you guys. I mean, really, I can't emphasize it enough um, because you wanna understand that the birth chart, and only if you have an accurate time can you do this. Of course, you can use the moon chart, set the time to noon, figure out if the moon goes into two different signs that day, you know, figure out which sign they are. Um, if you don't have a birth time, uh, you can still use moon chart, but you cannot use the report with the moon chart. So you can only do this if you have an accurate birth time. And then just to compare it to the Prussia, as I was saying, moon's at six degrees 30, well, actually, let's see. There we go. six degrees 44 minutes with Uranus, and it's with her um, moon, and it's in the fifth house. And what were we just talking about her fifth house? How this is gonna be really emphasized the next year when K2 goes there. And then, uh, yeah. I think that the Prashna chart is revealing that we need to pay attention to the fifth house. Um, we need to pay attention to her moon and also Uranus is going retrograde. So um, that's gonna be important. Um, yeah, and the ascendant for um, Kamala when we're asking this is Mula. And that's about um, getting down to the roots, getting down to the root cause of things. Um, and it's ruled by Jupiter. And we've been talking about Jupiter and how this is so important for her. So this is what I'm trying to say. When you're doing Prasha, you've got to tie it in to the transits. And the easiest way you can do that <laughs> is to use this report. I hardly see anybody use it and it just baffles me. Um, so I just wanted to show that to you guys. Um, of course, you, if you have any questions, feel free to email me info at hindustanastrology.com. You can go to my website uh, where you'll find my consultations tab. You'll also find my shop tab where I have available my Navagraha elixirs, Navagraha bracelets, the Yantra uh, Navagraha uh, Cosmic Healing Discs. So this is the one with all of them. And then I have them separated in discs. Um, and then now I have the new Fixed Stars bath bombs that have come out and um, some other skincare items. So yeah, I hope this finds you guys well. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.